Hey everybody, today I'm going to be using a Tesla valve to make a one-way straw. It works when you suck in one direction, but not the other. Now if you're not familiar with a Tesla valve, let me explain what it is. The Tesla valve is a type of check valve that has no moving parts. A check valve is a one-way valve, meaning it will let flow go in one direction, but will impede it in the other direction. For example, you can make a simple one-way valve with a flap like this, I just put a piece of tape on a lid that has a hole in it and when the tape closes it seals off the hole. So if there's any pressure that pushes through on this side it will just lift the flap but if it tries to push on this side it can't go through. It's blocked. For example you can see there's no air in this bottle. I can easily blow it up. It's full but then no water comes out. Even if I squeeze on it hard it barely starts leaking out. So with just a simple piece of tape, I have an easy one-way valve here that works pretty well. It does have some leaking going on though. Now there's lots of different one-way valves you can make. There's a ball check valve, a diaphragm check valve, which is the one I just made. There's a swing check valve, a tilting disc check valve, a flapper valve, a clapper valve, a stop check valve, a lift check valve. But the problem with all of these valves is that they have a mechanical moving part in it. So anything that moves quickly is going to eventually wear out that valve pretty fast. But then Nikola Tesla came along and he invented a one-way valve that has no moving parts in it called a Tesla valve. Now let me explain how a Tesla valve works. In this direction the flow of fluid can easily flow through because it can just follow this short path here. However, if it's coming this direction, there's two options for the fluid to go. It can go this direction or it can split off and go that direction. But the fluid that comes this direction is going to curl back in on itself and end up shooting back towards the inlet of the fluid. And so it's going to cause a vortice right here that's going to impede the flow and cause a higher resistance. And then the fluid that comes through here is going to split up again and some of it's going to go this way and some of it's going to go this way. And so they're going to meet up again right here. So everywhere you have one of these loops, it's going to cause more turbulence and you're going to have a higher resistance through the tube. Whereas if you're just going this direction, there's not a high tendency for the water to loop back on itself and it doesn't cause vortices here. For example, here's my Tesla valve sliced in half. Watch how easy it is for a ball to roll from one end to the other when it's going in this direction. So I'll put it in this end and it easily comes out. But now watch it in this direction. It has to go up and around. And up and around. And then it comes out. So what I did is I 3D printed a Tesla valve in the form of a straw and I'll put the link to this file in my description. And then what I did is I coated it with some plastic dip to make it completely waterproof so that I could suck some water up through it. And so now I have a Tesla valve straw. So let's go ahead and try it out and see if the Tesla valve actually works for a straw. Is it harder to suck in one direction than the other? Okay, so first we're going to try the direction that it should flow the best. So it should be able to flow easily down the center here into my mouth. Let's try it out. Works okay. Like a normal straw. Okay, now let's flip it around and try it the other direction. Here we go. So in this direction, it's going to have a lot harder time because as it tries to go up, it's going to turn back around on itself and get caught up right there and then right there, 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 and there. And so it's going to have a lot higher resistance through the straw. Okay, so I can still get it, but it's a lot harder. So you can tell you're using it the wrong way, but I can barely get any water up unless I really suck hard. This way, it just comes right in. So it's hard to tell how much I'm actually getting in my mouth, so let me hook this to it and you can see the rate of flow through it one direction versus the other direction. Okay, so I'm gonna fill this up with 100 milliliters and we're gonna see how long it takes to flow out 100 milliliters through the straw when it's going the right direction. So this should be the direction in which there's lowest impedance going through it. Three, two, one. Okay. 
done. 10 seconds it took. Okay, so now let's see how it flows through if I switch it to the other side where it should impede the flow a lot more. Okay, ready, set, go. It's a lot slower. And 15 seconds. So as you can see, the Tesla valve doesn't work very well for a one-way straw. If you want a one-way straw, you can get it. For example, I just put a one-way valve on a straw here. I can suck it up and it doesn't go back down. Can't blow it out either. But why on earth would you want a one-way straw? Now surprisingly, when I was researching this video, I actually found an advertisement for a real one-way straw like this. It doesn't let your uh, liquid drop back down in the straw after you've been sucking it up. <laughs> so some people want that maybe. So surprisingly, the Tesla valve doesn't work very well for a one-way straw. In fact, it doesn't work very well for a lot of applications. The main drawback to it is, as you can see, it doesn't completely block flow in one direction. It just increases the resistance. So you're not going to stop the flow completely in one direction. You're just going to slow it down. So why would Tesla invent something like this? He actually filed a patent for it and was granted it. So why would Tesla patent something that doesn't work? Well, it turns out that the Tesla valve actually works better for a gas than a liquid. So basically in one direction, there's a hardly a pressure drop, but in the other direction, there is a pressure drop. And so it acts as basically a fluid diode. It allows fluid to pass in one direction, but restricts it in the other, other direction. Even though it does let some through, it still causes a pressure delta between flow going one way versus the other way. Now this can be useful in high frequency applications. So it's possible that Tesla might have experimented using these Tesla valves in his oscillating machine to generate power. Now this oscillating machine is also called his earthquake machine, even though that's not what it was intended for, but he famously showed that he could use it to find the resonant frequency of buildings and cause it to shake at the right frequency and make the whole building start to sway and almost fall over. And in high oscillating systems like this, you can't have any mechanical moving part because you get extremely high frequencies and you can't have something that's moving back and forth really fast because it'll just break really easily. So you need something that doesn't have mechanical parts like the Tesla valve. So even though it does allow some backflow, overall it still has that pressure delta across the whole thing that ends up being useful when you're trying to keep pressure on one side of it. So do Tesla valves work very well for drinking straws? In one direction, yes. In the other direction, kind of yes. But other than that, they're not used very much in industry. The reason is because overall, check valves are really cheap to make. You saw how I just made one with a little piece of tape on a bottle there. So even though they wear out, there's not really situations where you wouldn't just replace the valve and keep replacing a cheap valve, then find a more expensive version like the Tesla valve that still lets backflow occur. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And you can also hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest video. And check out theactionlab.com if you haven't yet, where I sell my Action Lab experiment boxes and experiment book. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.